Welcome to the Listening Time Podcast. Hey everybody, this is Connor and you're listening to episode 72 of the Listening Time Podcast. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're enjoying these weekly episodes again. I hope that uh, you appreciate that you're getting an episode every week now. I hope I can keep this rhythm now. I really want to uh, upload episodes every week. So hopefully this will be the normal schedule moving forward. So uh, I'm happy about that. And remember that if you want my specialized training, if you want my listening practice seminars where I train you to hear the right patterns and expect the right sounds in English, then make sure to become a Listening Time member and you'll receive that training. And if you want my advanced podcast episodes where I speak at normal speed, then become a Listening Time family member and you'll receive two new advanced episodes every month. And that will help you understand native speakers when they're speaking fast. So make sure to click on the link in the episode description. That's patreon.com slash listening time to sign up to become a Listening Time family member today. All right, in today's episode, we're going to talk about transportation. This is an important topic because all of us need to use some mode of transportation to move from one place to another. And there are different ways that we can uh, go to different places. There are different types of transportation. So I'd like to talk about some of those today. And remember that you have the transcript available for this episode. That's below the episode in the episode description. So go down and click on that if you need it. And remember that you should repeat these episodes many times until you can understand everything that I'm saying without using the transcript. Okay. And if you like this podcast, please give it a five star rating and share it with your friends and family members and anyone else you know who's learning English and help this podcast grow. All right, let's get started. Are your ears ready? You know what time it is. It's listening time. Okay, so let's talk about transportation. In particular, I want to talk about the different modes of transportation in different parts of the world that I have experience with. So I want to talk a little bit about transportation in the U.S., uh, about transportation in Mexico, and transportation in Europe. Obviously, I have more experience with transportation in the U.S. and in Mexico, but I've been to Europe a couple times, and so I've had the opportunity uh, to also go around uh, throughout these countries as well and use different modes of transportation. So I can talk a little bit about that as well. So first, let me talk about the U.S. You might already know this, but in the U.S., cars are king. In English, when we say that something is king, we're saying that it is the number one thing in this field. So when we talk about transportation in the U.S., we have to start by talking about cars because cars are definitely the most important and the most popular way that people get from point A to point B. This is another expression that we use a lot in English. We say get from point A to point B. We just mean that you're moving from one place to another. So the most common way for people to get from point A to point B in the U.S. is by driving. So it's very common for people to have cars in the U.S., uh, for example, when I was younger, when I was living with my parents, but I was already driving, I was 16, 17, uh, and my sister was also living with us for uh, a time period, there were four of us 
in my house. There were four of us living there, uh, but we had five cars at our house. For a lot of you, that might sound crazy. That might sound like we were super rich, but absolutely not. Uh, this is something that you can see uh, with families in the US. Uh, the mother has a car, the father has a car, both kids have a car. Uh, in our case, we had an extra car because it was a really old car that we just never sold uh, and it wasn't very good, but we still had it uh, with us. And so that's why we had five cars instead of four. Uh, but remember that in the US, you can buy used cars for pretty cheap. It's not like in other parts of the world where cars are always pretty expensive. In the US, when you just want to buy a cheap functioning car, it doesn't cost that much money. Uh, you can actually get a car for just a few thousand bucks uh, if you want. In English, the word buck just refers to dollar. So if I say 10 bucks, I'm saying $10. So you can buy a used car for a few thousand bucks, maybe even 2000 bucks and get a working car uh, that will do its job. Uh, of course, these will be old cars and not very nice, not very beautiful, but they're cheap and they work if you buy the right one, of course. And so this is a great way for people to uh, get their first car when they get their license and uh, start driving pretty easily. So as you can see, cars are pretty accessible in the US compared to in other countries. And the infrastructure in the US is made for cars. So the way that our cities are designed uh, is for people that want to drive from point A to point B. So we have cities that are intersected by highways. So we have highways that go through our cities. And so it's very easy to go from one part of the city, from one end of the city to the opposite end of the city. Of course, there's traffic during certain times of day, but in general, it's very simple to just go straight through a city using a highway and you can get to the other side very easily driving. Uh, this is different in other countries because in other countries, cities don't have highways that go directly through them. So it's much harder to drive from one side of the city to the other side. But in the US, it's very simple generally. So you can see that everything in the US is designed for cars. We have more parking spaces than in other countries. So it's easy to find parking when you go to different stores, different businesses. They usually have parking lots and they're usually free. So it's much easier than in other countries. However, since in the US cars are king, this also means that there's little public transportation. Of course, we have public transportation. We have buses and we even have subway systems in some cities. But in general, our public transportation is not very robust. Uh, in English, the word robust refers to something that is complete, thorough, uh, it has a lot to it. Uh, we don't have a robust public transportation system in most cities in the US. We have some things like trolleys, which are like small trains. Uh, we have this in San Diego, in my city, and I've taken it a few times before. And like I said, we have some subway systems in major cities like in New York, but in general, most people in the US don't rely on these types of things to get to work or to go different places. People drive, it's pretty simple. And of course, in the US, there are bikes and there are bike lanes. Bike lanes are the lanes 
in the street that are specifically designated for bikes. So we have a lot of bike lanes, so it's possible to do this, but our cities are pretty spread out. This means that places are far from each other, so it's not easy to bike to all the places that you want to go. Uh, and so that's not an option for most people, but you can go and bike to places that are close by, no problem. And in most cities, you can't really walk to most of the places that you need to go to. Uh, like I said, our cities are pretty spread out. And so walking isn't uh, the number one way that you're going to get to different places. Um, but of course, if you're in the downtown area or places like that, um, usually it's pretty good for walking. You can go to the places nearby, no problem. But in general, like I said, people drive. All right, let's talk about transportation in Mexico. In Mexico, people also use cars a lot. Um, cars are a little less accessible than in the U.S. Uh, because they might be a little more expensive relative to people's salaries in Mexico. So cars aren't quite as accessible as in the U.S., but cars are still king in Mexico. I would say uh, people drive. Uh, if people have cars, they definitely drive. Uh, and one big reason for that is because uh, the public transportation system in Mexico isn't very good. Uh, it's not very efficient. Uh, there's one city in Mexico, which is Mexico City, that has a more robust public transportation system, but most other cities don't have a really good system, so it's kind of hard to just rely on public transportation Uh, to get to where you need to go. And in this case, when I talk about public transportation, I'm talking about the subway system because in Mexico City, there is a big subway system, uh, whereas in other cities, we don't have that. Uh, however, there are a lot of buses in Mexico. So in my city, there are many, many buses. And so there are buses for everyone, really. Um, but as I mentioned, the public transportation system isn't efficient. So even though there are a lot of buses, it still takes a long time to get to different places in the city, even though we have a lot of buses. So it's very common for people to have to take two buses or three buses to go to work in the morning and to come back in the evening. And it might take them an hour and a half or even two hours sometimes to actually get to their destination. So that's a long time, even though we have a lot of buses, even though you can definitely get from point A to point B using these buses, it's not going to be efficient a lot of the time. You're going to spend a lot of time on this bus just waiting to arrive. So it's not very fun. So if people have cars in Mexico, in general, they use them. They drive these cars. Uh, the bad thing about driving in Mexico is that the cities are not designed to handle so much traffic and so many cars. And we don't have highways that go through the cities like in the U.S., And so it's much harder to get from one side of the city to the other side. And there's always a ton of traffic during rush hour. Uh, in English, rush hour refers to the time of day when people are going to work or coming home from work. So there are many cars on the road. During rush hour, traffic is absolutely terrible in big cities in Mexico. It's maybe some of the worst traffic in the world. Uh, I've talked to people that live in Mexico City, and usually they think that Mexico City has the worst traffic they've ever seen, uh, worse than any other city, at least in North or South America. 
So you can imagine that during rush hour, you don't want to be in your car driving home or driving to work because it's pretty bad. Um, and in Mexico, it's not that easy to get around using a bike because it's not quite as safe as in the US or maybe in Europe um, because uh, there aren't as many bike lanes. Uh, and so drivers can uh, get closer to you and you might not really have a lot of space uh, to ride in the street and you don't feel quite as safe because people here aren't used to seeing bikers everywhere uh, in the streets and so they're not constantly looking left and right to see if there are any bikers around them. They don't have that custom because it's not that normal here. They're not used to it. And so if you try to ride your bike in busy areas, uh, you'll definitely have to be very cautious. But there are some areas, like in my neighborhood, uh, that have bike lanes and that are more suitable for bikers. So in my neighborhood, you can definitely ride your bike and get from point A to point B. And it's very convenient in this neighborhood and you can rent bikes very easily. So that's good. And maybe that will expand to other parts of the city in the future. Um, but in Mexico, I would have to say that the best way to get around, if you can, is through ride sharing. So using apps uh, that allow you to uh, order a ride and someone drives you to another part of the city. Uh, these are great in many cities in Mexico because there are many drivers with these apps. There are tons of people that use them and the prices aren't that high. They're actually not too bad compared to other countries. And so if you have the money to use these types of apps, they can be very useful because you can avoid the buses uh, and you don't have to worry about finding parking because parking is not easy in Mexico. And so you can get to your destination in the fastest way without having to worry about parking or things like that. And it's usually very comfortable. So that's my number one way of going to different places and getting around the city in Mexico. Lastly, let me talk about Europe. So I've never lived in Europe, but I've been there twice and I've used their public transportation system. And it's pretty cool in a lot of different cities, like in Paris, for example. It's so easy to just get around the city, to go wherever you want uh, using the different subway lines. Uh, in English, when we use the word line when talking about subways, we're talking about different routes. So you have a lot of different lines that intersect and you can get off one line and get on another line at certain subway stations. And these help you navigate to different parts of the city. So in Paris, for example, there are many subway lines and it's very easy to go from uh, any area of the city to another area. Of course, you might need to walk a little bit. Uh, your subway line might not take you exactly to the point where you want to be. But if you just walk a little bit, you can probably navigate the whole city pretty easily using public transportation. So this was great when I was traveling throughout Europe because it was very easy to travel without a car. That was really cool. Uh, I think that using a car in European cities can definitely be a headache. In English, we say that something is a headache when it's something that's uh, annoying, it causes you stress or worry or problems. This is uh, a headache. So in Europe, driving throughout cities can definitely be a headache 
if uh, these cities are very crowded, like Paris, for example. And so it might not be very convenient to use a car and to find parking and to pay for parking and all of that. So I think that people that live in big European cities would probably prefer to use public transportation if they can and if they feel like it's comfortable enough. Uh, I know that it's very comfortable to be in your own car, of course, uh, and so some people might just prefer this no matter what, but other people might just value the convenience of being able to go out, not take their car, not stress over the traffic or parking or things like that. And in big European cities, you can often avoid this if you want to. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and in some European cities, uh, bikes are very common, like in places like Amsterdam, you can ride your bike all over the city and there are tons of bikers. And if you're in the middle of big European cities, uh, it's very nice to walk, uh, in my opinion, because uh, there's a lot of beautiful architecture around you. There are a lot of beautiful sights. And so I think that walking in these cities can also be very pleasant. It can definitely be pleasurable because you're not just walking with the intention of arriving at your destination. You're also taking in the sights around you and appreciating them. In English, when we say that you take in some view or take in the sights, we're saying that you actually pay attention to the view around you and you appreciate it. So this is something cool about walking in European cities. However, I've talked to students that live in uh, really touristic cities like Rome, for example, who tell me that most people who live there, they walk right past these famous monuments and they don't even pay attention to them and they don't even really care about the fact that they're walking right past the Colosseum or something like that. Uh, for tourists, this seems crazy. We would probably think that this is awesome to see these incredible monuments every day when you walk around the city. But for locals who have lived there for many, many years, it's probably not that exciting anymore. So for them, they probably don't really take in all the sights every time they walk outside. So in Europe, in my opinion, I think that uh, using public transportation, walking, and in some cases, riding a bike could be the best ways to get around because it might be hard to use a car in crowded cities in Europe. This might not be the most convenient way to travel around the city. All right, well, why don't we stop there for today? I hope this episode was interesting for you, and I hope it was good practice for your listening. Uh, remember that if you want more practice, if you want my training, then become a Listening Time member to receive my listening practice seminars and to receive extra episodes. And if you want to reach an advanced level of listening, if you want to practice with real English, with fast English, then become a Listening Time family member so you can receive two new advanced episodes every month. And in these episodes, I speak at normal speed, but I provide the transcript, of course, to help you understand what I'm saying. And if the normal Listening Time podcast has become pretty easy for you to understand, then it's time for you to move on to the advanced podcast and start to practice with fast English. So make sure to sign up. The link is in the episode description below this episode. That's patreon.com slash listening time. So sign up to become a Listening Time family member to receive those advanced episodes. And if you like this podcast, please remember to give it a five-star rating. That really helps the podcast uh, stand out and get noticed by people. And please share this podcast with anyone else you know who's learning English who could benefit from it. 
and this really helps the podcast grow. All right. Well, thank you for listening to this episode, and I'll talk to you on the next episode of Listening Time.